We're talking to Reverend Reuben Dockery, who is the uh, pastor of Cumberland Presbyterian Church. And of course, uh, Reverend Dockery has some additional responsibilities in terms of mentoring, dealing primarily with uh, fatherhood. And of course, uh, Reverend Dockery, I think we promised when we uh, had our first break that we would give you an opportunity to identify okay. uh, what we consider and what you consider and what uh, your seminar will uh, deal with some okay. of the real problems that uh, young men have as fathers and, and, and what, what you are planning on doing to okay. help resolve those problems. Okay. Well, Dr. Haney, you know over the years, um, actually over the decades, the age of fathers have gotten younger and younger. Uh, and the issue is, is that as young, the more, the younger they are, the greater the tendency for irresponsibility as fathers. There's no pre preparation for children and family and providing the type of quality in life a child needs to grow up in a healthy environment. So what happens is, is that you have situations where you have forced single parent home. Uh, uh, quite often, and that's not exclusive because there are other instances or circumstances, but in general, that's what we're focusing on. Uh, I had the occasion a few years back when working at the prison to walk the track with a gentleman that was 56 years old. Uh, he had another 20, 30 years he was facing, and he was talking about how his son was in classification mm -hmm. and that he would be coming to the prison. Mm -hmm. And it broke his heart because he knew that when his son was born some 20 years prior to that, he should have been there in his life. Mm -hmm. And now his son is following the, the, the uh, path that he laid for him, either directly or indirectly. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the things that we're talking about doing, bridging that gap. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of young men are desirous and need of mm -hmm. uh, structured fatherhood training. Mm -hmm. How do you become a man? What mm -hmm. are some of the expectations? And what are the resources for men? Uh, what are some of the legal bases for me being a, what are my responsibilities legally, those type of things. We're focusing on those things in a mm -hmm. seminar, in a workshop setting mm -hmm. so that uh, those questions can be asked and answered. The beauty of the workshop is that we're able to put case studies out there mm -hmm. and have the participants in the workshop to actually identify key issues or problems mm -hmm. and then work together in a workshop setting and come up with solutions mm -hmm. to those problems. So we walk away with information that we can track and we can focus on uh, long term. So it's not just something that happens one time. Mm -hmm. And the, the seminar itself, it actually gives them the facts, uh, the data, the, the statistics that's that the are on the That's the purpose area. of your seminar, just to make sure that they have Absolutely. that kind of information right. and, and, and to reinforce it. And, and just Let them know that it is an issue. It's a documented issue. Mm -hmm. Now many of them know what their individual issues are. Mm -hmm. uh, we've come up with about 20, 20 different uh, what we call crisis or character types okay. uh, that are addressing some things in our young men. Recently Dr. Cosby came under fire because many were upset that he exposed some realities, mm -hmm. particularly within the Afro-American subculture. Mm -hmm. But those are things that need to be dealt with. Mm -hmm. uh, rather than beating those individuals up saying you have to fix it, mm -hmm. this is an opportunity to really tell them how to fix it mm -hmm. in an instructional mm -hmm. and a caring uh, mm -hmm. way. So. And they need that kind of information in, within that form and, and within that format. Absolutely. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So the focus here, uh, a lot of times people make it a male against female thing, mother mm -hmm. against father. Mm -hmm. But the focus is fatherlessness is not a spe it's not specific to the male general but it's a societal problem mm -hmm. because in the absence of fathers mothers are forced to play dual roles mm -hmm. which cause them not to be able to be a mother as much as they would want to quite often mm -hmm. having to work two and three jobs and that sort of thing mm -hmm. and not spend time with their children and so forth in the family context and and showing them love and care so what this does is it again it educates and trains young men on how they can really be supportive to their children, mm -hmm. more than just mere child support. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things we're hoping to do is to uh, link this with some of the court mandates for individuals mm -hmm. who are delinquent in child support mm -hmm. payment, individuals who have domestic violence issues, mm -hmm. and individu individuals who are, are facing other court sanctions due mm -hmm. to uh, irresponsibility, essentially, mm -hmm. uh, for their actions as being fathers. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to say to the courts, by them coming through this program, mm -hmm. we can give them a certificate that they have been exposed to key things, mm -hmm. of course, recognized by the court. So. And so what you are really saying, uh, Reverend Docker, is that you already have a, a, a regular, recognized clientele <laughs> for such group, for such a group. 
and, 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 and that there has been very little done in terms of trying to deal with them from this perspective, and you Absolutely. think that, that you should be able to go in and uh, uh, create that kind of situation where they can be more knowledgeable of their situation. And, and well, as, as a person who's involved, who has also been involved in uh, incarceration, mm -hmm. uh, what would you say in reference to uh, such a program, not only dealing outside of uh, within the public sector, right. but why, what would you say about such programs that would deal with those individuals in the uh, correction system who have the same kind of problem? It's interesting that you would ask that question because you know that it is much easier for uh, a young man coming from certain social economic backgrounds and circumstances to go on the news for robbing someone, taking someone's life, or some illegal act mm -hmm. than it is for them to be recognized mm -hmm. for any positive uh, behavior. And quite often, by the time they get into the penal institution, it's over for them. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them have hope of coming out, but when they go in and really have, re have not received any structured information, mm -hmm. when they come out, they go back into the same triggering environment, mm -hmm. unequipped with any information as to how they can make any change. Mm -hmm. So there's no real rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the thing here is that we're focusing on means and mm -hmm. structured information I'd like to focus again on the fact that we're taking their information, mm -hmm. translating it into a framework mm -hmm. that we can share this and replicate it, not in just one area, but all over the United mm -hmm. States of America. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and I understand uh, uh, what you're saying, too, and, and, and that uh, you believe that uh, there ought to be uh, individuals, uh, parts of um, individuals who are in uh, uh, local officials, uh, sheriff departments, uh, the uh, W uh, criminal justice system and et cetera ought to be interested in, 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 in the program that you have. Is that right. what we're saying? Quite often the reason problems are not resolved is because they're not properly identified. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do is first start by identifying the problem, then talk about solutions mm -hmm. to the problem. And you think that if you could get the uh, individuals, for example, down at the jail, uh, for mm -hmm. example, to uh, listen to what you have to say and, 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 and cooperate with you and with the reference to this program, you think that right. you could... And not just the jails, but the uh, John Q. Public, okay. John, John Q. Q. Public, Public, those uh, that are on the streets, those mm -hmm. that are displaced, Place. economically and socially, mm -hmm. uh, those who have no real uh, uh, personal identity, mm -hmm. uh, those, you know, uh, as well as in the jail. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly this thing could work on both ends, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. but absolutely by having jail officials to recognize it's important mm -hmm. and open the door to that type of education. Good. And so you've got a real program here, and of course what we'll do, uh, Reverend Dockery, is give you an opportunity to expand upon that. Okay. Uh, for follow this uh, second uh, commercial break. We'll be back with our audience following this very short break. We're talking to Reverend uh,